A very quick way to give a photograph a look is to apply the split tone effect. And this works really well on photos like this where we've got a lot of highlights and a lot of distinct shadows but not a lot of color going on. Of course it'll work on any photograph but these can kind of give themselves to it quite nicely. So let's go into the develop module. We're going to do just a little tweaking first. We're going to go into the basic panel. I'm just going to recover some of the highlight information just to show a little detail through the window. And then I'm going to push the blacks down quite quite far and let's open up the shadows a little bit but also pushing down the blacks I want to kind of give it some clarity give it a quite a bit of clarity there there we go nice maybe a little more not that much but about there there we go so we're creating quite a cont contrasty kind of a looking image and the reason I'm doing this is because I want it to look at maybe just a little bit more cinematic and now we can play around with our split toning to create some interesting results so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to split toning. Now what the split toning enables us to do is to add a color cast to the shadows and the highlights independently. So let's start with the highlights. There's a couple of adjustments here. We can choose the hue and notice that nothing is going to happen. The reason nothing is happening because the saturation is at zero. So we want to saturate it and then we can choose a color. So if we add some saturation there, notice that we're seeing we've got the reddish color which is becoming a pink and all the highlights. The more we saturate it, the more of that color will be applied. So we can click on here and select the colors by clicking and dragging here and we can literally preview these and see how we want these shadow colors to look. I kind of like that one right there, but notice too, as I go down, the saturation is going down. You'll see that little slider there with the S on it over here. So I can literally go in here and find exactly what I'm looking for, for the color and the saturation. So the hue goes across this way, saturation up and down. Very saturated, less saturated. So find the color you want, pull down the saturation. So we're going to give these highlights maybe a little bit of this kind of a warmer color. Kind of like that. And then we're just going to apply that by simply clicking away. And we've applied it. All right, so let's do the shadows, and this time I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to turn up the saturation, and I'm going to slide the shadows over until we find a tone that we like, maybe that greenish tone. And then I'm going to reduce the saturation and just find a nice balance. So we kind of like that. Now we can go balance between the foreground or the highlight and shadow colors, should I say. So if we push it to the left, it starts to add a bias towards the shadows. And we push it to the right, it adds a bias to the highlights. But it's grabbing those colors and pushing them into both tones. So this enables us to create some really interesting mixes for split tone effect. So if we look at that there now and we go before and after, you can see that this is kind of interesting. We've created a very cool kind of an effect. Let's try it again on a different portrait, maybe with some more information. So let's try another look, uh, a very popular look. It was kind of similar to what we did there is a yellow in the highlights. And we'll increase the saturation. And a green in the shadows. So let's give a little saturation, go for the green in the shadows. And you can see we're able to reproduce that look very, very quickly. And we could tweak the balance. I'm going to double click it to reset it. So there's other ones we could do too. Um, one period kind of a look is to take the hues and we're going to add a blue in the highlights. And that looks quite nice. And then we could add more of a red into the shadows. So let's increase that and go down to the red to the shadows. And you might have seen this in some of the more vintage kind of styling. And we're able to quickly just tweak that, balance it where it should be. And let's go back to our adjustments, our basic adjustments, and make a couple of little tweaks to this. So one of the things you might want to do is just give this a little negative clarity, make it softer, and pull the saturation back just a little bit. Because that particular film stock that they were using back then wasn't heavily saturated. And then I would say this would be a great time where you might want to add an effect such as some grain. So we could go in here and we could put a little bit of grain in here if we wanted. And let's play around with that. And we're just going to make it really big rough grain just so we can see it at this magnification. Of course, if we zoom in, you can see it's going to look quite different. So we're able to create that film look just by 
playing around and doing that. Now, all of these can also be saved as presets. So that essentially, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do with the split toning. And split toning also works really, really well on black and white. So let me show you here. If we were to make it a black and white photograph, which we just did there, I'm not going to get into all that. We'll do black and white separately. But we can also get into the split toning, and you can see how this effect now looks really, really interesting. With that, we can go back to the yellows and greens, and we can get, you know, just kind of an interesting effect there. Or we can pull the saturation down very, very low, which is what I sometimes do when I'm working with the uh, black and white effect. Just give it just a little touch of color. So there we go. It's just starting to come through. Maybe give that, that kind of tone there. And then we could do the same thing in the shadows. Just give it a little touch in the shadows. And what we're essentially doing now is getting ourselves more of a duotone type of an effect there. And of course, we can play around with the balance and find something that looks nicely balanced between the two. And there we go. So split toning is great. So when you see a lot of these looks, the vintage looks, and also when people are trying to imitate things that they might see on Instagram and things like that, the split toning is your go-to tool for that kind of an effect.